In this video, we will learn how to create an automated test for our passenger class. We've used the Eclipse scrapbook to create a passenger object and execute its methods, but doing that every time we want to ensure that our classes are working is a tedious and manual process. An automated test that creates an object from a class and runs every method in that class is called a unit test. You should consider it your responsibility as a Java developer to create a unit test for every class you write. The good news is that Eclipse makes this easy by supporting a testing framework called JUnit. By creating unit tests on all of your classes, you will be able to test your entire application with a click of a button. This allows you to release high quality software. An even bigger benefit will come later when you make changes to that software. Now with a click of a button, you will be able to see if that change has broken anything that was previously working correctly. We call this regression testing. Let's create a unit test for our passenger class. Each unit test we create will be contained in its own file. Typically, when you deploy an application into production, you don't want to include the unit test files. So we need a way to keep them separate from the actual classes we write for our application. One way of doing this is to create a source folder for our tests. Notice we have a source folder called SRC that contains our package and classes. If we create another source folder for our tests, we will eventually be able to build our application without including that test folder. To create a new source folder, right-click or control-click on the Mac on the Reservations folder and choose New Source Folder. Give it the name Test, and click Finish. Now we have two folders, one for our classes and another for our tests. We want our tests to execute inside of the same package as our classes. That way, if a method does not have a public access modifier, the test can still execute that method. Even though our tests are in a different source folder, they can be part of the same package. You do that by putting a new package inside of the test folder with the same name as your source folder's package. So again, remember that our package inside of SRC is called org.airline.reservations. Let's just create the same package inside of test. So I'll right click, choose new, and package, and I'll give it the same name, org.airline.reservations and then click Finish. Now we are ready to create our test class file. It will go inside of this package, so we'll right-click, click New, and now we have to dig a little deeper. So we'll go to Other, and then inside of the Java folder, under JUnit, you'll find the JUnit test case. So let's select that and choose Next. Now we want to use the latest framework, which is JUnit 4. So I'll start by choosing that. If you right-clicked on your package, your source folder and package should be correct here. So now we'll give our test a name. The naming standard will start with an upper case, just like a class. The name will be the class, followed by the word test. Since we're testing our passenger class, we'll call this passenger test. We'll leave everything here as it is, and then down here towards the bottom, it says class under test. In other words, which class are you testing? If you type in a class here, the test will look at that class and ask you which parts of the class you want to test. This will be a huge time saver, so let's enter passenger. Now down at the bottom, JUnit is warning us that JUnit 4 requires some configuration. We can do that now, but let's ignore the warning, and I'll show you a really nice feature of Eclipse that will fix this. So we'll click Next. And since we said that this is going to test the passenger class, it tells us everything about it. So we can see the constructor and all of the methods. Now, just like objects come from classes, classes all come from a master Java class called object. For everything that you check, Eclipse will set up the structure of a test. Now, testing object is like testing the actual Java language, so we won't do that. But let's test everything that is part of our passenger class. You can click these individually or just check passenger. Finally, I'll click finish. 
I'll ignore this warning for now and click OK. And here is our test file. It's set up similar to a class. It's in a package, as you can see. It has a class declaration and it has methods. There's a similar method for each item that we are going to test. So the three things that we checked earlier are represented here the constructor, the getName method, and the setName method. You'll also notice these import statements. We are going to be calling methods that are part of the JUnit framework classes. JUnit is not part of the core Java libraries, so we need to tell our test where to find these classes. We do that through the import command. This is just like what we did in the scrapbook when we managed our imports, but here we are doing it as part of the class. Now you can see that the test has some issues. These are a result of that warning that we ignored earlier. I didn't fix it then because I want to show you a great feature of Eclipse called Quick Fix. Whenever you have an error, Eclipse will try to suggest how to fix it. By hovering over this first one, we can see that there are two Quick Fix suggestions. Eclipse is suggesting that we upgrade to a later compliance level. This is a set of rules that the Java Virtual Machine obeys, and JUnit 4 needs to be at level 1.5. If we do it for the workspace, it will work for all projects in the future, not just this one. So I'll choose that. We can ignore this error for now, so just click OK. And that got rid of part of the problem, so let's hover over it again, and we'll choose Fix Project Setup. We'll just add JUnit 4 libraries to the build path and click OK. Since JUnit is a third party framework, it is not part of the core Java libraries. So adding it to the build path allowed Java to know where to find it. And that fixed all of our other errors as well. These were pretty specific errors, and it wasn't obvious which suggestion to choose. But when we have problems in our own code, this will make it easy to implement the fix. So our test file is set up. Next, we will write the actual instructions for each test method.